With the controversial moratorium on settlements in the West Bank set to expire, does that also mean an end to hopes for renewed peace talks? Plus, I travel to Syria to find out what Hamas's political leader has to say about the prospects for peace in the Middle East. Part of my exclusive interview with Halib Mishal is coming up. Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates. I'm Nick Robertson. This is PRISM. There are calls for restraint and hints of compromise as a key moratorium on settlement construction expires in Israel. It's a pivotal issue that could derail fledgling talks. And tonight we're holding it up to the PRISM. It says that 13,000 home units are waiting to be built with another 25,000 units planned for the West Bank. Yuriv Oppenheimer is the director of Peace Now and joins us live from our Jerusalem bureau with another perspective. Yuriv, tell us, if you will, the statistics that we're looking at here with the settlements. How many people live there? What's the rate of growth of the settlements compared with other areas? You can hear more of my interview with Halib Michal tomorrow night right here on PRISM, including Michal's reaction to President Obama's call for a Palestinian state by next year, plus hear what he has to say about captured Israeli soldier Gilad Shalit. That's Monday on PRISM. Yemeni security forces take on al-Qaeda militants in an offensive targeting members of the terror group in a southern province. And Iraq's internal security forces welcome hundreds of new recruits into the fold. Our Ben Wiedemann will take a look at their training and the challenges they face. A burst of gunfire in Yemen's capital. At least eight security officers were wounded after two al-Qaeda militants targeted their bus. Meanwhile, a state-run news agency says that Yemeni security forces have driven out al-Qaeda militants from a southern town. Mortar rounds have reportedly landed in Baghdad's green zone. It's unknown if anyone was hurt or killed. The attack comes as Iraq continues bolstering its internal security forces. In the UK, Ed Miliband is the new Labour Party leader. He upholded his brother David to take over as former Prime Minister Gordon Brown's successor. It was a close contest and required several rounds of voting. Russia's president is in China for a three-day trip, highlighting renewed energy cooperation. Mr. Medvedev stopped at a Russian war memorial in Dayland before heading on to Beijing for talks with Chinese leaders. The Russian president is expected to wrap up his visit with a trip to Shanghai. Indian Army troops are in Delhi in advance of the Commonwealth Games. At least a thousand of them will help build a pedestrian walkway. The bridge will replace another span that collapsed earlier this week. The troops are also part of an overall increase in security for the Games. Still ahead on PRISM, temporary housing torn to shreds. A tent camp for earthquake survivors bears the brunt of a sudden and deadly storm. Also ahead, a steel cage injects much more hope into a rescue operation. Crews try out a piece of equipment that, well, that will retrieve 33 Chilean miners trapped underground. A cleanup is underway in Haiti's capital after a deadly storm. The UN says at least five people were killed Friday. High winds and heavy rains caused severe damage at one tent camp, housing some 50,000 people displaced by the January earthquake. An aid group says there were no deaths at that Port-au-Prince tent city, but the organization's medical tent was ripped apart. Central America is bracing for a lot of rain as, tropical, as a tropical depression hits the region. Let's check in with Karen McGuinness at CNN's World Weather Center. Karen, just how much rain is headed their way? 
Karen, thanks very much indeed. Another place where we know it's going to be warm right now is Jordan. And Jordan may soon be the home of another top tourist destination. A team of experts from UNESCO World Heritage Group is visiting Wadi Rum, the southern desert that spans 720 square kilometers. The protected area boasts sandstone, granite mountains, along with Red Sea dunes. These tourists think making it a UNESCO World Heritage Site would be a good idea. The archaeological city of Petra in southern Jordan has been a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 1985. Coming up, in a hope in the form of a rescue capsule has arrived in Chile. Called the Phoenix, this narrow cage will eventually pull 33 trapped miners to safety. And Mexico's drug wars have claimed thousands of lives. We'll hear what one Mexican government official has to say about the problem and possible solutions. Welcome back to PRISM. I'm Nick Robertson. The work to free 33 men entombed in a Chilean mine got a boost Saturday. A narrow capsule designed to pull the men out has arrived at the site. Our Patrick Opman is in Copiapo, Chile with the latest on the rescue efforts. Patrick, it must be quite a boost to uh, get all the pieces of this sort of rescue plan, get them in place at the site. A very big boost, Nick, and we just saw some more crucial pieces of that rescue plan go by only about 20 minutes ago. This is the large metal tubing that was carried on flatbed trucks that came by. Again, people were applauding here, cheering them on. And uh, what this tubing will be used for is to line that mine shaft once it's finally completed and act as a buffer between those mine walls and the rescue capsule. Well, that's it for Prism from Abu Dhabi. I'm Nick Robertson. Marketplace in the Middle East is up next.